In the last video on this mower, we looked over my very first example of a PowerSmart mower and we picked a good one. This one is only one season old, has the bigger engine and self-propel. The best part about this mower is that it won't break the bank at an astounding 169 US dollars. The only problem is that these are impossible to find at a local retailer, so I feel almost fortunate to get one. What's up everyone and thank you for stopping by. Today's project is this PowerSmart lawn mower and the problem is that it won't start unless we physically put fuel into the carb. Now more than likely we have a dirty carb so in this video we're going to take off the carb, inspect it, then of course clean it. Hopefully when we get it started we don't find any other problems with this mower. Now, I'm going to try and repair this lawnmower, however, it may not be the exact repair you need to make to yours. We'll explore other options later in the video. Now, we're only going to mention what these other options could be. We don't have enough time to look into them, but if you need more information on these options, you're welcome to ask as many questions as you need to. In the last video, we gave this mower a quick cleaning and then we did some light diagnostic work to find out that it does run if we put fuel into the carb's throat, although it didn't run very well, which is a bit concerning. Now, most people don't clean under their mowing deck and that's because they don't realize what effect it might have on how the mower cuts the grass. You don't have to clean it every time you use it, but I would try at least doing it twice a year. Now cleaning the top of the mower really doesn't serve any real purpose, but it does make it a lot nicer to look at. The first thing I want to do is to show you that the engine does start and run when we put fuel into the carb's throat, confirming that we have a working ignition system and enough compression from the engine. As you just heard, that must have been the lamest test start I've ever heard from a lawnmower engine. I then put some fuel into the gas tank, primed the carb, and then crossed my fingers that it would start and run. But if it had done that, we wouldn't be here making this video, would we? The next thing I did was to remove and inspect the spark plug and found it to be a very generic brand, so as a precaution I made sure it worked by using my spark tester. Sure enough it was working, so the next thing I want to confirm is the health of the engine with my compression tester. With a reading of about 114 PSI, and assuming this engine has a compression release, it means this engine is actually extremely healthy, which I would hope so with it only being one year old. With all this information, I'm very certain that the carb is most definitely the issue. The first thing I need to do is to drain the fuel out of the tank, and that's because there isn't a fuel shutoff valve on the fuel line. If there was, I would just turn the fuel valve off and then isolate the carb. Since we only drained the fuel from the tank, that unfortunately means we still have plenty of fuel in the carb. I'm going to use the drain bolt to get the majority of the fuel out of the bowl before I remove the carb. You don't need to do this, but it keeps from making a huge mess while handling it. Just to let you know, this is the same procedure I would do to this mower to get it ready for winter storage. At this point, you can now safely remove the fuel line from the carb and then remove the nuts for the air filter assembly. Just be careful because you cannot remove the air filter assembly until you disconnect the breather hose and the primer line to the carb. Unfortunately, filming this part is extremely difficult because there simply isn't a lot of room to work with. So here's the back of the assembly, and as you can see, this is the small line that goes to the carb for the primer, and of course, this is where the large hose goes for the breather. I also noticed that there's a steel spacer to keep from crushing the plastic in these openings, but one of them has stayed in place while the other is stuck to the gasket on the carb. Just make sure you replace the other one or you could damage the housing. The last thing we need to do is slide the carb off the studs, and then we can disconnect the governor linkage from the top of it. Then we'll start to disassemble the carb and inspect it. We'll start by removing the bowl nut so we can get to the main jet. Just be careful because there might still be some fuel left inside it. After removing the bowl, we can see that it's perfectly clean inside, which is great news. More than likely, the only issue is a clogged main jet, which sits inside the post in the middle of the carb where the bowl nut threads into. To remove it, make sure you have a flathead screwdriver that's almost as wide as the slot in the jet, otherwise you run the risk of damaging it. So this is the brass main jet, and there's supposed to be an opening in the middle of it, but as you can see, you can barely see a pinhole through it. That means it is clogged and we need to try to clear it. I like to use a small wire, but there are other ways of doing this, such as using carb spray, compressed air, or a guitar string. 
So here it is after using my piece of wire and as a comparison here's what it used to look like. This was definitely our issue but since we're here we also need to inspect the emulsion tube as well which is also sitting in the post. To get it out we need to push down on top of it and then tap the carb until it falls out. So here's the emulsion tube and what we need to do is to make sure all these tiny openings are clear. There are plenty of ways to clear them just like the main jet and just like before, I like to use a small piece of wire to clear them. The only problem is that there's a second set of openings that are extremely small and for those I like to use the wire from my brush. Once you've cleared all the holes we have one last thing to check before we can reassemble the carb. The last thing we need to check is the pilot jet which is on top of the carb and underneath this plastic screw. Take a mental picture of how the screw is sitting because you'll need to put it back the same way. Once the screw is out of the way we just need to pry on the side of the plastic to remove it. After that we need to make sure the tiny opening in the tip is clear. For this I like to use my wire from my brush again but you can use compressed air or carb cleaner as well. After that I'm going to use some carb cleaner to clean the carb. My belief as to why these openings clog up is because of long term fuel exposure while in storage. That's why I believe running your mower till it runs out of fuel right before storage is the best method. I have heard of people leaving fuel in their mowers for long periods and not having this problem so I would do whatever method you feel works best for you. Once I've sprayed the majority of the car but with cleaner I'm going to start the reassembly process. Now take your time and try not to over tighten the brass main jet. If for some reason you find that your carb is extremely dirty with white deposits or rust inside the bowl, I would recommend just replacing it as it will save you from a major headache. I would also recommend getting an OEM carb if you're worried about the quality of the generic ones but I would get whatever fits your budget. Now once your carb is back together we can now install it back onto the engine. First reconnect the governor linkage to the carb, slide it back onto the studs and don't forget to reconnect the fuel lines. Now this would be a great time to either replace your line if it's showing signs of cracking or installing a fuel shutoff valve to help make storing your mower a little easier. The last thing we need to install is the air filter assembly and the most important part is to reconnect the large breather hose to its port on the back of the assembly otherwise you could let dirt into the engine causing premature wear. And of course don't forget to reconnect the small line for the primer bulb as well. Before trying to start this mower I want to remove the main air filter and pre-filter and the reason is I want to clean them and oil them so they'll do a better job filtering the incoming air. Do not use a heavy oil like motor oil, instead use something very light such as WD-40. It doesn't have to be perfectly clean, just cleaner than when you found them. Now the fuel I'll be using is 89 octane, 100% gasoline with no ethanol and it's stabilized. Now using 10% ethanol gasoline is fine but you cannot leave it in the tank over winter or even a couple of months of storage. Now after adding fuel to the tank I'm going to watch and see if the carb starts leaking fuel and if it does it means you need to inspect the carb for a float or needle issue. Ours is not leaking so I'll try and start it. So the mower started on the first pull which is great news and even though it blew out some smoke it eventually went away. That typically means that some of the oil made its way past the rings probably when I picked up the mower to put on my work table. Now since the engine is warm this would be a great time to drain the oil. By the way the oil looks it's a good thing we're changing it because it looks like it's never been changed since they started using it. The first oil change is the most important as it gets rid of a lot of potential metal debris. So the only bit of advice I have is if you're only ever going to change your oil once make sure it's the one at the end of the first season. However if you want your engine to last I would recommend changing it at the end of every season. Also make sure you dispose of your oil responsibly at a certified recycling center and never into the ground as it could make its way into the water table or into the streams and rivers. The last thing we need to do is to put some oil back into it. Now I don't know how much oil I'm supposed to put into it so I'm going to add a little bit at a time and use the dipstick frequently to check it. 
according to the dipstick i'm just a hair over the top opening which is the full mark now this is perfectly fine however if you're well over the top opening i would just tip the mower on its side to carefully remove a few ounces and then check it again and then add more if you took a little too much out now more than likely they had some fuel in the tank when they put this mower up for the winter and there's a good chance that it also had some ethanol in it this eventually clogged the main jet which didn't allow the carb to deliver any fuel to the engine Another option as to why this engine didn't start is that the flywheel key might have been sheared because they were running over things that wasn't just grass. This would throw off the ignition timing and cause it not to start. Always try to pick up sticks and branches before mowing and make sure you avoid obstacles like stumps. Now to be honest, I don't blame the mower for not starting. It was a maintenance issue, so always read your owner's manual as it does state to run the mower out of gas before storing it. It also recommends that if you intend on keeping any fuel in the tank, to keep it full of fuel to reduce moisture contamination. So my question is, would you buy the cheapest self-propelled mower on the market? Personally, I wouldn't have a problem with it, but I would do it knowing that everything on it is cheaply made and I might have problems getting parts for it. However, money is money and the less I have to spend, the better. Just remember that you do get what you pay for. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or about your own projects. And I hope to see you in the next video.